So here's the uh, file input and output example from class and I'm just going to run through it here in the screencast and uh, talk about it a little bit more. So let's set a breakpoint and then run through this line by line. So the first thing that we're going to do is randomly generate some data which is what we're going to be uh, first of all saving to a file. So I'll run that and basically we have here it is some uh, randomly generated data. So now the uh, actual file IO part. First of all, we need to open the file. And so we use fopen. And we want the file to be called numbers.txt. And it's going to go into the current directory. So you can see this is the current directory that I have uh, right now uh, where I'm running this code. So we go into this folder here. We want to write to the file. That's what the W means. And it's a text file. So we need to put the T here. So the two return values that we get here uh, are the file ID, which is like the handle uh, to the open file. And if there was uh, some reason why the open failed, then there'll be an error message that gets uh, returned here. And so we can print out that error message to the user. So let's run that. Let's have a look. File ID that we got back was the value three. Now you should remember that uh, any positive number here is a valid file ID and if open uh, returns a negative number to indicate failure. So we say, well, is it actually returns negative one each time to indicate failure. So is it negative one? If it is, then we'll throw an error and abandon the program. But it's not, so we continue. So now what we're going to do is uh, write out the data to the file. So step through line by line, we use the fprintf command and we supply the file ID as the first argument. That means we write to this particular file as opposed to writing it out down here in the command window. So we're writing out this, numbers are, and we have a format string, same as the sort of thing you've seen many times before, and then the actual values uh, that will be placed in the respective items here in the format string. So I'll just run that line. Uh, and for clarity, what I'm doing is also printing the exact same thing to the command window. So this is the same exact line of code, the only difference being the first argument here is a file ID and here we leave that one out and just go straight into the string and what that means is just print it out down here instead. So let's run that and so we see this is the uh, exact text here and so this text will have been written over uh, into our file as well. So now let's step through that a few more times and so you see what's happening, this is being printed out. Now there's a few of them, this is going up to 20 so I'm just going to new breakpoint down here and then continue with that run. All right, now that we're finished writing to the file, we're done with it, we should close it. So we call fclose uh, with fid. So let's run that. All right, with that done, now let's go and have a look at the file that we just wrote. So here it is here, it's come up in uh, the current folder view. So if I open that up, you can see here it is. This is the file that we just created. And it's the exact same text as what was printed out here in the command window as we would expect. Okay, so the opposite to that is to read in the data. And so first of all, we're going to read it in using this fscanf function. So open the file, fopen file name for reading as a text file, rt reading as a text file. So let's do that. Okay, what's the fid? We've got the value three again. It's not equal to minus one. So we continue. So fscanf here, it's kind of like the opposite of fprintf. So we have the file ID that we want to read from, and then the string that we're going to match against. So we're matching against this, numbers are, and then some number, a comma, and then a space. So basically this format that you can see here. This uh, final argument here is the size of the array that we want to get back. And so what this is saying is we want it to be three by however big as you need to fill up the whole file. Like if we only wanted to read the first part of the file, we could put in some number in here, but if we put infinity, then it just means as large as is needed uh, to take all the data. So if I run that line, let's have a look at what we actually have here in data two. So you see it's a three by 20 it turned out to be. Uh, that's the size that it needed to take up all of the lines in the file. And so let's have a look at how these are arranged. So here is the first line in our file, data two here. Let's compare those numbers. That's the first column. So the first column 
in this uh, matrix here turned out to be the first line in our file. So if we want to get it back the way we originally had it, we need to take the transpose with the uh, single quote on the end here. So we take the transpose and now you see the first line corresponds to the first row and so on down. Alright, so that was one way of reading in that file. Let's have a look at uh, another way of doing it. So we want to read from the same file. So there's no need for us to close it and then reopen it. All we want to do is move the file pointer back to the beginning. So the file pointer is basically how far through the file um, are we? What, uh, like what point through the file will we continue reading from if we call one of these uh, type functions again, one of these file reading functions? We want to go back to the start. So we have this function f rewind. It just says go back to the start of the file and we're going to read it again. Now, text scan here is the function that we're using to do the actual work. And so this text scan here is a little bit more general than uh, the fscanf that we were using before. fscanf, remember, uh, returns a simple matrix, which means that all of the items must be of the same data type. And so if we're trying to match uh, things of different data types, then this won't work for us. So that's why text scan exists. It returns cell arrays instead. So here's the pattern that we're matching against. Uh, some string, uh, then the literal text, space, R, space, and then some numbers. Uh, and just as a note, text scan here requires uh, percent %f to mean a numeric type, a floating point type. Uh, it can't support, doesn't support the, the G specifier. We use G up here in uh, f scan f. So we're matching against uh, this pattern. So let's run those two lines. Let's have a look at the C here. I will play around with it in the command window to get a feel for what it actually is. So C basically uh, is, let's have a look at the first one, uh, C1 is uh, these text numbers. And so that's what we would expect. That's what in our pattern here, uh, the text numbers appeared in every position in this uh, first entry here. If we do C2, then we get the second column, which were these values, and C3 was the next column, and so on. So what we're going to do is basically arrange it into a data matrix of the same format as what we had before. So that was the uh, C2 was the first numeric column, 3 and 4 for the other two numeric columns. So let's run that line. That gives us this matrix here, it's the same as the previous ones, and then we close the file, because we're done. So what we got at the bottom here, this last little thing is just an example of using an assert, just to check that uh, our operations have worked correctly, that what we wrote out is the same as what we read in using each of the two methods. Now of course, when we actually wrote these out, let's have a look here in numbers, we only wrote them out to six decimal places. So when we do this comparison, we have to be uh, conscious of the fact that we have a limited precision uh, there in that comparison. And of course, because they're floating points, we should always be doing uh, a comparison of this form that the absolute value of their difference is less than some tolerance. So what we're just simply doing here is we assert that for all of these that this comparison is true. The reason why we have all here twice is because the all function will collapse only along a single direction. So let's I'll show you what I mean by that. Let's run this inner part first. We get back matrix of logicals, uh, all of them being true. So if we now had that and we ran the function all over that, then that will go down each of these columns and say is everything in each of these columns equal to 1? And it is, so we get back a 1. What we actually want is to know just a single scalar value, so we put another all around it and that gives us back just the value 1 here to say that all of them in all dimensions were equal to true. And we just assert that that's the case. So remember that assert checks whether something is true. Uh, if it is true then it just continues. Uh, if it's not true then it throws an error. So we just run those two lines and nothing happened which means that the assert succeeded and we did indeed read back the exact same data as what we wrote out.